Okay, welcome to the next video in our series on how to build an e-commerce site using WordPress, WooCommerce, and the WooStore theme. My name is Adam with UploadWP.com and in the last video what we did is we set up our product categories and so we're ready now to go ahead and add our first product uh, to this site WorldCupTees.com which is uh, going to be a niche t-shirt site uh, focusing on soccer t-shirts basically uh, for different countries. So let's go ahead and log into the WordPress admin and let's go to um, products and then if we go to product categories you'll see that we created three product categories last time so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead now and uh, create our first product so let's go to products and add products <clears throat> and I'm going to um, the first product we're going to put on the site is just a team or it's a USA soccer shirt here's what the shirt looks like so let's go ahead. I've already I've already filled out uh, or created the product description. USA Soccer. USA Soccer is going to be the name of the shirt. So just go ahead and put that up here. Um, and again, for whatever type of product you're selling, um, you know yours is going to be a little bit different. But this is for a, a, a soccer T-shirt. So uh, go ahead and put the title of the product there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy the product description, which I've already created and just paste it in here. So there we go, there's our product description. You'll want to format this um, however you you know however you like, but for now just I'm gonna keep it basic um, just so I can get through this uh, relatively qu uh, quickly. Um, so there we go, go ahead and paste in your uh, product description right here just like you would with a normal WordPress post. Uh, choose your category and that's what we set up in the last step. Team USA in this case is what I'm gonna go with. Um, <clears throat> then scroll down and now here's where uh, things get uh, a little interesting. Now since this is a t-shirt uh, it's going to have multiple sizes so we're going to have to set this up as a variable product. So and you see right here product type you can do simple product which would be just a normal product that doesn't have a different color or size or shape it's just a product it's just uh, it, it is as is you know there's no other options for it. With a t-shirt you have small, medium, extra large, large, all different sizes to choose from, and in some cases uh, colors as well. For this t-shirt it's, it's just one color but we want to offer small, medium, large, and extra large. So we're gonna have to choose for product type um, a variable product, okay? And then we're gonna set up our, var our attributes and our variations next. Let me just point out a couple other options. Um, by default you can just do a simple product which like I said before would be a product that doesn't have any uh, it never changes in terms of size or color or anything like that. Um, you also have the option to go with uh, grouped product. <clears throat> and this, this would be more for if you have similar types of products that you want to group together and kind of bundle a product. Uh, create a, a, you know, more of a bundle. So two or three items that sell in one SKU, that would be a group product. And then you also have the option here, which is pretty cool, external affiliate product. So if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to supplement my own t-shirts that I create uh, or I have printed or I print myself and sell with uh, shirts that other people create so for example if I wanted to create like, an, like a, a Zazzle uh, or Cafe Press affiliate t-shirt site I could do that uh, with this option very easily um, simply I would enter my uh, product URL uh, affiliate uh, link basically here that would take them to the t-shirt so I would set this product up this t-shirt up just like it's my own and then I would simply link uh, right here in the product URL I put my affiliate link that goes to that product and so it looks just like you're shopping on my site and you are um, but then when they purchase uh, you get an affiliate commission over on Zazzle or Cafe Press or whatever t-shirt affiliate program uh, you would choose to use and it's a great way to supplement your site with more products when you're first starting out you you, you might only have a few products so or you could you could even create your entire site uh, as an affiliate style uh, e-commerce site using this external uh, affiliate product option right here which is great so in this case uh, we're gonna set it up as if these are our own products um, so I'm just gonna go with a variable product for the product type uh, and now down here um, 
if you can go ahead and give it a skew if you want to if you have a lot of products obviously uh, okay so in this case uh, since I'm just starting out it's a small site I'm only gonna have a few products on this and it's just an example I'm not gonna use a skew but if you're a larger operation then obviously go ahead and put your product skew right there shipping class this is if you had set up shipping classes um, uh, then you'd go ahead and choose which class you want to use for this product. I have I didn't set any shipping classes up because I'm just going to do basic flat rate shipping. Again, everybody's shipping models are different, uh, but just know that you can set up shipping classes and then apply them to uh, to products very easily right here. Visibility, catalog, and search. Catalog, search, or hidden. This just shows where you want your product to be sh uh, to show up on the site when people search for it. Uh, I recommend always just leaving it catalog and search. And then um, featured, if you check this box here, you can go ahead and feature this product so it'll show up on the home page under the featured products. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, but the important thing here, so if we go to the next tab, then we go to taxes. Um, here's where you can say whether the product is, is taxable or not taxable or only tax shipping. Again, tax rules are based on where you live and where your business is set up. Um, but just know that all the functionality is there to do that tax class again same thing totally custom based on your business <clears throat> inventory here's where you get to choose if you want to manage stock for this product um, in this case I do want to manage it um, and then I want to just say how many of these shirts I have in stock let's just say I have 15 so I'd enter 15 there uh, stock status it's in stock obviously and do I want to allow back orders <clears throat> yes you can allow back orders um, and you can choose to allow back orders and notify the customer that it's on back orders or just allow them and and not tell them that it's on back order so in this case I'm gonna say do not allow back orders um, and then one more thing to point out about inventory stock is that you'll get a notification letting you know when your stock is getting low for an item uh, based on the threshold that you set when you went to the WooCommerce um, settings um, under inventory you can set your threshold so for example I set mine at 5 which means that I'll get a message letting me know when the stock reaches five to hey the stock's getting low go ahead and order some more product alright so and then re, uh, related products since this is the first product we have set up we're not going to do anything here but uh, upsells and cross sells this is where you can set those up upsells would show up underneath uh, on the product detail page um, so any products that are related to this one I could put I could uh, associate with this product and then cross cross sells would show up in the shopping cart um, as well so it's a great way to um, uh, to uh, generate more sales uh, so now attributes we need to set this up because this is a variable product alright so this is where uh, this comes into play we need to set up a size attribute okay uh, because we're going to want to have small, medium, large, and extra large for this t-shirt. So under attributes, click on that tab and then just go ahead and click on add. And in the name, in this case it's size. In your case it could be color or it could be both. For us we just need to create size. Alright, and so here we're just going to say small and then you need to create or uh, separate them with the pipe symbol which you can do by holding down shift and then the backslash key. Again, that's shift and backslash key to create the pipe symbol. Small, medium, large, and extra large. Okay, so those are going to be our, those are the attributes we need to set up first. Okay, and then here, check this box that says used for variations, and uncheck this box that says visible on the product page. Okay, so used for variations is the box I want to check right here so we have our attribute that we're creating called size and then our values are small medium and uh, small medium large and extra large and they're separated by the pipe symbol no spaces just use the pipe symbol and the pipe symbol is created using the shift uh, holding down the shift key and the uh, backslash key our size attribute scroll back up to um, the top here and click on save draft because that will go ahead and save that attribute for us and will allow us now to create the variation so if we scroll down and we go to attributes we should see the size there we go there's the size attribute it's been saved so now if we click on 
uh, the variations tab right here. There we go. So now we have, uh, looks like we have the size variation has been created. All right. So we have small, medium, large, and extra large. So that should show up as a drop down box on uh, the product detail page for this product. So again, it's just important to remember that first you need to create the attribute. Okay. So in this case, it's size give it its values and then scroll up to the top and click save draft. You have to do that first before anything will show up in variations. So the next step is to go ahead and click on the variations tab and we need to create um, our variations, our small, medium, large, and extra large variations. We need to create one for each size. So to do that, click on the variations tab and then click on add variation. And then we're going to choose right here where it says any size in this drop down. We want to choose small for the first one. So for stock quantity, we're just going to say 15, which this is where you could track actual stock volume for each size. So let's say I only had, I had 15 smalls, 10 mediums, 20 larges. You can adjust that within the stock quantity here. I'm just going to stick with 15 for all of them to keep it simple. You could also do that with price. You could change the price for each variation. So small, medium, large might be 19.99 and uh, extra large might be $22.99 just to make up for your cost. Maybe extra larges cost more to make than the other sizes. Whatever. That's just an example. You can change both the stock quantity and the price um, based on the for each individual variation. But I'm going to keep them all the same uh, just to be simple here. So for price, $19.99. Shipping class, I didn't set any of those up again just because I'm keeping it simple and shipping and taxes are totally custom based on your business. Sale price, if you wanted to show a, a retail price and then a sale price, you could do that right here. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with $19.99. Okay, so we have here's small, uh, $15.99. We have that one set up, so I'm going to go ahead and click Add Variation because now we need to set up our medium. So scroll down, any size, choose medium. Again, I'm just going to stick with the same settings here for stock quantity and price. And I'm going to click Add Variation. And now I'm going to set up my large. So I'm going to go large, stock quantity 15, price 19.99. And we need to set up one more variation for extra large. And choose extra large from the drop down. And 19.99. There we go. So now we have our uh, variation set up for small, medium, large, and extra large. So those should now show up uh, at the product detail level as a drop down uh, for our um, customers to be able to choose what size they want. So again, to set up variations, first you need to set up at your attribute. In this case, it would be size. Then go ahead, save that draft and then scroll down, go back in, and then set up your variations by clicking Add Variation and setting up um, each variation. In this case, it was our variations were small, medium, large, and extra large. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just update that. And then the next thing we need to do is we have to add product images. Okay, so we have our product title, our product uh, description here. We've set up uh, the product data information, um, including our uh, variations. So now what we need to do, and we've added our short description down here, product short description. Um, what we need to do now is set up our featured image. So we do that right here. So just go ahead and click on set featured image. This is going to be the main image that shows up on the product detail um, uh, page. So go ahead and just select a file just like you'd upload any other image. And for uh, featured product images, I like to keep them all uniform, the same size. I go with 420 by 420 as far as pixel size. And I'll put that on the on my website as well, um, uploadwp.com. I'll, I'll share all the information as far as product image sizes that I like to use that I've found work best. But here's an important thing. Go ahead and you have to click on uh, the use as featured image. Don't click use this image, click use as featured image. And it's going to go ahead and save that. Okay, so now just click on this, uh, go ahead and click save all, uh, actually just click on the X to close out. So now we have our featured image right here. 
okay that's going to show up and the last thing we want to add is uh, another image that'll show up um, uh, like so for the back side of the shirt I want to add that image so I'm going to do that this is kind of tricky I guess there's I wish there was a better way to do this but this is the only way I know of um, go ahead and just click on the product description at the end of the product description and then just like you upload insert any other picture click on that just go ahead and find your uh, your shirt or your image in this case is the back of the shirt go ahead and select that and just say use this image it's going to show up right here okay and then go ahead and update this product the site we should see there we go there's our featured product set up right here on the home page and it's also going to show up under recent products since it's the first product on the site if we go ahead and click on that product there is our featured image right here if you click on it it'll show a larger version of it and then here's our secondary or our thumbnail our thumb image of the thumbnail image of the back side of the shirt you can have as many thumbnail images as you want Here's our uh, short description right here, our product title, oops, product title, uh, our price, and here is our size variation drop down where you can choose an option and it shows you how many are in stock. A customer can go ahead and add as many shirts as they want. It shows our category right here, Team USA, add to cart button. Uh, shows up right here. And then if we scroll down, here's the product long description and uh, so it's it's really that simple um, that's kind of a lot actually to take in it's not uh, it takes a couple of products to set up before you get used to it it is a little bit tricky um, but once you figure it out you get a kind of a model for how you want your products to look um, then just go ahead and use that model for the rest of your products to keep your site uniform. So in the next video I'll show you how to set up the featured slider section. Um, I'll also quickly go over creating uh, another product just so you get an idea. I'll go through it a lot quicker in the next uh, video um, just so you get a better idea on how to do that. Um, so hopefully you stick around for the rest of this series on how to build an e-commerce site using the WooCommerce um, plugin, the WooStore theme and WordPress. My name is Adam with UploadWP.com and we'll see you in the next video.